These are dark, dismal times indeed, my friend. Never have I felt more alone or alienated in my entire life. And the reason for that? Well, it's all of these stupidly bastard massive bloody smartphones. These days, the average size of a phone hovers somewhere between 6.5 inches and absolutely f***ing enormous, and my stumpy little digits simply can't cope anymore. But then I started receiving literally dozens of comments and emails and tweets from like-minded brothers and sisters like yourselves, pining for the loss of their beloved compact handsets. And I'm talking about dearly departed devices like Sony's excellent Xperia Compact family, and of course those awesome Samsung Galaxy Minis. So that's why I've rounded up my favourite compact and smaller smartphones of 2020 so you get an idea of what mini mobiles are lurking out there for you. So here's my pick of the best and for more on the latest and greatest tech please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now first up you've got Google's Pixel handset starting with that Pixel 5 flagship which costs 600 quid here in Blighty and boasts a relatively dinky 6 inch screen and even though those bezels aren't the slimmest around this blower is a positive hand pleaser. Of course, you've got the latest, freshest Android 11 OS on board, complete with the smarter notification system. You've got the improved smart home and media controls as well, and all those other bits that we really know and love. However, the Pixel 5 has hot competition in the small phone stakes from two other Pixel phones from 2020. The 6.2 inch Pixel 4a 5G, which costs 100 quid less, and the even cheaper and more compact Pixel 4a, with a price tag of just 350 bob. The Pixel 4a is the most miniature of the trio, but the budget cost means that you do lose out on some of those more premium features of the other Pixels. For one, you get the more basic Snapdragon 730G chipset, which to be fair is still up to pretty much anything you need, including a tasty spot of gaming. But it does not come with built-in 5G support, unlike the Snapdragon 765G platform which is packed inside of the Pixel 4a 5G and the Pixel 5. And on the cheapy Pixel 4a, you also miss out on that secondary ultra-wide angle camera lens that you will find on the other two handsets. However, the 12 megapixel primary lens is exactly the same across all three of these blowers. And that snapper is an absolute belter, capturing great looking photos, even in light and that is frankly total dog shit. In fact, it's so good, it's almost some crazy voodoo shenanigans. All three of these Pixel phones also come with an OLED screen, but the Pixel 5 serves up a buttery 90Hz refresh rate, which makes scrolling through your apps and your menus feel crazy smooth. And that flagship also boasts wireless charging support, as well as a proper bit of water resistance, unlike its two siblings. But it's definitely not all good news though, because the Pixel 5 flagship is the only one of this family to not come with the 3.5mm headphone jack. Bum fudge. But anyway, if you want to see how these Pixel phones really stack up against one another, definitely go check out my full 5 vs 4A 5G vs 4A side-by-side -side comparison. It's proper lush, in it. Or perhaps you'll find yourself more tempted by a spot of iOS action, in which case definitely go check out Apple's fresh new iPhone 12 mini instead. I gotta say, I actually think that this 5.4 inch titch is my most favourite of the new iPhone 12 family because it's genuinely compact and more comfortable to clutch. You've got the same specs and best features that you'll find in the iPhone 12 vanilla edition and it's also the least ridiculously overpriced of the bunch. And yeah, you do get that same weird retro brick-like design of the rest of the family, but in this form factor, one-handed use is refreshingly simple. Apple has finally toughened up its handsets too, so they stay fresh and scratch-free, while you get that same water resistance of the Pixel 5. It isn't all good news here, sadly. The OLED screen tops off at 60Hz, and you still have that ridiculous Henry Cavill moustache notch to contend with. Still, performance is top draw, and the battery life is just about good enough to see you through a pretty busy day. And I was impressed with that dual lens rear camera setup too, which gives the Pixel phones a fair run for their money. And like all three of those Pixel phones, I've also fully reviewed the iPhone 12 mini, so go check that out for all you need to know about the highs and the lows of this mini marvel. Also, while you may think that the standard iPhone 12 is is quite compact with its dinky 6.1 inch screen, do not be fooled. Those chunky monkey bezels and the weird box-like finish means that it is genuinely difficult to use one-handed, not to mention rather uncomfortable to clutch as well. And you should also 100% avoid the iPhone SE 2020, which is actually one of the smallest modern smartphones, but suffers from awful battery life and outdated camera tech. Now the next phone on my list costs more or less the same as the iPhone 12 mini, but personally I think it's much better for enjoying movies on the go or for simply blowing out some complete stranger's internal organs with ridiculously overpowered weaponry in some violent video game. I am of course banging on about Sony's wonderfully wonderful Xperia 5 Mark II, which is a more compact 6.1 inch version of the Xperia 1 flagship phone. You've got almost the exact same hardware here, but the beautiful cinema-wide OLED screen has actually been upgraded to a 120Hz display, with zero notches getting in the way of your hot movie action. 
Plus, Sony's usual upscale and smarts can bring low-res video to life, boosting the contrast and resolution for more lifelike results. And gamers too are very well serviced by the slick performance here, as well as Sony's excellent set of mobile game and features. While the Xperia 5 Mark II can blaze through Call of Duty Mobile with stunning 120 frames per second visuals. Straight up though, if you want a simple point and shoot camera experience, then you're definitely best off going with one of those Pixel phones or the iPhone 12 mini. However, if you want a proper pro DSLR style setup for your photo and video capture, well, the Xperia 5 Mark II is going to make your nipple so hard they'll probably put out someone's eyeballs. And then of course you've got that lovable form factor as well, because while 6.1 inches is fairly compact by 2020 standards anyway, you've also got that 21 by 9 aspect ratio finish, which means that it is beautifully comfortable to clutch. Of course, you've got those lovely rounded corners, which you don't get on the iPhones as well, which adds to the comfort factor. The only problem is that, of course, that also means the phone is taller, so it can be really hard stretching up to the top of the phone, but you can drag down the notifications bar from anywhere, and you've got proper one-handed help on there as well. But anywho, go check out my full Xperia 5 Mark II review for a run-through of all of the best bits and why it is well worth anyone's time and cash. And if your wallet is fit to burst and you want something with a little bit more flair, then definitely have a gander at Motorola's super slick new Razer 5G phone. This all-new reimagining of the classic flip phone sports a 6.2-inch OLED screen which can fold in half with zero creasing. And when it's all closed up, the Moto Razr 5G is ridiculously tiny so you can shove it anywhere you like, most bodily orifices included but not medically sanctioned. And with the TNC secondary display, you can check your notifications and even use your apps without having to unfurl this clever wee chappy. The original Motorola Razr reboot actually came out last year, but despite the lovable and very desirable form factor and everything, unfortunately it was a bit of a mixed bag, and that's why Motorola has spruced it up and upgraded the specs for this 2020 5G version. So for instance, in this version you get a Snapdragon 765 chipset, which of course is capable of doing pretty much anything you need it to, backed by 8 gigs of RAM, as well as a 48 megapixel primary camera that is much better across a range of conditions. Battery life is still rather pants, sadly, not quite as bad as the iPhone SE 22, 20, but definitely not great, so it's light use only, unfortunately. Plus, yeah, the Razer also has an annoying notch thing on the main screen. It's not quite as bad again as the iPhones, but it's still kind of rubbish. Plus, of course, the Razer 5G is crazy expensive, so this is definitely one to whip out at the pub to impress your mates when we're allowed to actually go to pubs again. And for a daily driver, you might want to consider an alternative option. Now, if you're proper skint and still after a mini mobile, then your best bet might well be Samsung. They've got a small collection of A-series smartphones that range from around 150 to 250 pounds, which definitely fall into the mini phone category. Category. For instance, you've got the Galaxy A41, which sports a weenie 6.1 inch AMOLED display plus a 48 megapixel primary camera and one of Samsung's Exynos chipsets. So that should be pretty good for movie fans on a budget. Alternatively, for even less cash, you've got the Galaxy A20e, which serves up a proper small 5.8 inch HD plus screen and a dual camera setup. It is definitely pretty basic all round, but it is certainly a titch. The only caveat is I haven't had the chance to personally test them out and review them myself, so I can't really vouch for them, but they're there as an option if you are low on cash and really desperate for a compact handset. But of course, if you've got one of those Samsung handsets and you personally like it, hate it, whatever, definitely leave us your own mini review down in the comments below. It'd be great to hear from you. And if I missed out your own favorite mini mobile of 2020 so far as well, definitely be great to hear from you down in the comments below too. Please do put subscribe, ding that notifications bell, and have yourselves a lovely rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.